right. Uh, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our webinar this morning. Uh, my name is Jason Wilcox. I am a senior architect with uh, CA Services, and I've been bouncing around the CASSO community for about 15, 16 years now. And one of the things of many of you that know me and have talked to me over the years is one of the things that's really a, a pet peeve of mine in an area of focus has always been the performance of SSO. And everything from monitoring that performance to testing that performance to ensuring that we always have a good, broad, um, and comprehensive performance management plan of SSO. And so, you know, when we started talking about in the broader community how we can man measure the performance of SSO and how we can do effective performance testing, it became pretty obvious that, you know, we already had the tools in place, but we haven't done a great job of helping, helping you, the community, actually utilize those tools. So this is one of the webinars where we've decided that we're going to help you start to introduce you to some of the tools that we have and help you to do that. Um, I've got with me uh, Dave, who is an absolute expert on the blaze meter side, and between the two of us, I think we're going to be able to give you some good information, talk a little bit about what we can do from a CA side to help you with performance testing of blaze meter. Um, so we're going to go through a few things. Um, I'm going to turn the time over real quick to Dave, let him kind of do an introduction around uh, blaze meter and some of its capabilities. Um, why you don't have to be a performance testing expert to use the tool, um, which is one of the great things about the product. Um, then we're going to talk to you briefly, kind of remind everybody kind of where our CASSO bottlenecks are and some of the areas that we really want to focus on that performance testing. And then we'll talk about the different ways to use Blaze Meter to test each of the components within SSO and actually walk through setting up and executing some performance tests on the LDAP directory, our underlying user store, on, Blaze, on uh, SSO policy servers, web agents, and then talk about some next steps what you can do to uh, pick up from here and go on and start doing some of your own performance testing. Uh, so with that, uh, Dave, you want to go ahead and jump in? Sure. Thank you very much. If someone could pass me the ball, I will... Uh... I will roll. Great. I am now the presenter. Let's let's uh, and off and running we go. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Uh, I am uh, as. Uh, as Jason mentioned, my name is Dave Caro. Uh, I'm in the product group uh, with uh, with BlazeMeter. Uh, we have been part of CA since last year, and uh, always happy to hear stories. Uh, uh, always happy to hear stories about how people use the product to accomplish kind of one of our primary goals, which is to get performance testing done without a wait and without a need for a centralized sort of specialized resource. So. Um, I'll just jump right in. A little bit on my background so you kind of know where I'm coming from. It really kind of fits in with the theme today, which is that I started out my career in this space uh, with Keynote Systems uh, and primarily working in their load testing and synthetic monitoring groups. And our load testing offer at Keynote Systems was a, uh, a consultant-led specialist uh, uh, service with a tool that literally nobody but us could learn. Uh, well, we were the specialists and people would call us in to run very, very large load tests. Um, if you were doing a commercial-sized uh, SSO implementation and you wanted to be able to literally hit it from all over the world with, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of users, um, you know, we were there. Um, but we were sort of the wizards in a tower, and, you know, you'd just kind of point us in the right way, and we would do all the work. And so obviously you had to schedule that, and you were dependent on waiting for somebody else. And uh, uh, Keynote was acquired by Toma Bravo and then merged with Dynatrace and, and uh, became kind of a larger entity. Um, uh, I then moved over to Sosta. Uh, Sosta is a company that, that pioneered uh, cloud-based load testing and really proved that you could scale quite large using the cloud and that it was reliable, and also uh, big into real-time analytics. 
and uh, back when that was actually kind of a, a neat trick. Now everyone kind of assumes real-time analytics on just about anything they use. Uh, and then I moved over to BlazeMeter, and the reason I moved to BlazeMeter was there's a shift where um, kind of a shift from having just a few wizards that can run performance testing to having uh, it become more democratized. In particular, BlazeMeter led a movement which you may have heard of called Shift Left, which is where testing gets done earlier in the development cycle. And so it had to appeal to developers uh, uh, and people who are otherwise not uh, specialists in performance testing, um, but also uh, kind of a general democratization, which is how do you make performance testing available to anybody who just wants to get it done and be able to do it quickly um, without having to um, spend weeks waiting or you know months learning something, right? And then we became part of CA Technologies last October. Um, pretty excited about that because CA actually has a lot of really powerful tools. Um, we're not the first you know, uh, a leading tool that they've acquired, uh, and uh, it's a, an amazing bunch of folks. So uh, that's kind of my background on how I got here. But let's talk about the main focus of my talk, kind of why did we create BlazeMeter, and then we'll do a demo. We'll actually play around with it a little bit. Um, so why why was there historically been a wait for uh, for performance testing? And, and Jason mentioned to me we were talking about this. You know, he'll, he'll have an implementation, and they'll be ready to do some testing, and you know, you get into the situation where, well, we're waiting two weeks or more to have the performance people run a test. And obviously, if you're trying to bring up SSO and make sure it's good for your 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 employees, or your customers, you don't really want to wait that long, right? So the reason why the 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 sort of legacy performance testing world is what it is is that there was a lot of complexity. It was sort of complex to set up and complex to use, right? And also, it had very restrictive licensing. So it was very expensive, and it was uh, typically very centralized. It was kind of locked down to certain servers, literally licensed to the network interface of a particular box, kind of old-school licensing model. And, and what that meant was that you had to have specialists and a sort of a centralized control in order to use these expensive investments, right? And you had some really smart people and, and high investments, but it was all very centralized, right? And you run into this problem here, which is that you had a small number of experts and sort of a scarcity of infrastructure to do the testing, uh, you know, a lab you had to schedule, and you end up with a queue. And in fact, not just a queue, but you also end up with sort of a, a triage where you decide what you're going to test and what you're not going to test because it's kind of a big deal to run a test, right? And nobody wants to walk into a store and look up at the wall and see that we're now serving, you know, number 27, and then you look at your ticket and it's 982, right? It, it's very off-putting. It's kind of a drag, like, well, maybe we shouldn't bother. Uh, um, uh, and so there was a big problem. And what happened was that um, even though people had these large investments in performance uh, testing uh, groups, the people who needed to do testing started to just go help themselves, and that was really where open source performance testing tools came in. And the reason why open source performance tools took off, and this happens uh, within, say, uh, development groups that, that need to be able to do their own stuff and control their own destiny. It also happens in, the, in Jason's case, you've got people who are doing an implementation and they need feedback as they're doing it and they need it fast, and so they, they go with something that, that they can just get rolling with. And the reason why open source performance testing took off is that it's sort of a self-service, pain-driven, zero-friction model. If you wanted to do testing, you just download the tool and start using it, right? There's no licensing, there's no procurement, there's no approvals, you just... You know, Pretty much no one needs to know you even have it, right? And you could easily learn on YouTube. There's a huge open market of shared knowledge and plugins and design patterns that you could tap, right? Um, very So very easy to just kind of jump in. Um, it was free like a puppy. And when you say free like a puppy, obviously if somebody gives you a puppy uh, and you don't have to pay for it, that's great, but you're still going to have vet bills and you're still going to have to buy a kennel to put it in or a, a dog bed or something, and it might still chew up your house if you don't buy dog toys, et cetera, right? So free like a puppy means it's it's free, but but there's sort of there's kind of an asterisk by free, right? And there were some things that didn't come free with the open source tools. And the big one in this case is JMeter, and, I, and we'll be seeing that today, right? And, and you know, uh, one of them is how do you, can you record right from your browser? And uh, the open source tools, Generally, the answer is no. Uh, uh, it's possible to do recording, but it, it's not really easy and straightforward, and it kind of requires you spending a chunk of time just understanding how do I get that started, right? And then how, what do I do with it? Uh, you know, sure, you can watch videos and stuff, but it, it's not straightforward, right? And provisioning, like if you wanted to, how do you tell JMeter to leap up to the cloud and bring up 100 instances of itself and load the data files you want to all 100 instances and run a test and then shut it down and bring all the results back? Um, that that required a lot of scripting and a lot of cobbling together, and so it was, it was kind of a 
a hassle factor, and also the data tended to be in islands. It was hard to share the data, right? So reporting was after the fact, not in real time. And if you're actually hitting your production infrastructure, you'd, you'd want real-time reporting, right? Uh, and if you're also trying to make adjustments, you want to see the results in real time. You don't want to sort of run a test, study it, and then repeat, which is kind of the old way of doing things. And then collaboration. How do you, how do you let others see it both in real time and after the fact? How do you easily share um, the results of your test so you can brainstorm on what to do next, right? Uh, test management, uh, how do you compare how it was last release to how it is now? You, you just upgraded your infrastructure. You want to be able to compare the before and after easily. You know, if you just have kind of random files laying around everywhere, it's very hard to easily find the right ones and then to bring them up side by side and be able to, to compare, right? So test management. And then support. You know, open source is great in that there's a huge community out there, um, um, but if you're on a schedule and or you're running into a novel problem, uh, it's helpful to have some commercial relationship with somebody where you can actually ask them questions and they're kind of on the hook to help you succeed, right? So uh, that is really where Blaze Meter came from. Uh, we filled a gap of the need for people to be able to run their own tests, to run them on their own time frame, and to get started much more quickly and to not uh, not have it be a big deal, right? So uh, that's the end of my slides. I want to actually pop a browser up over here. And uh, actually, I'm going to do, just to get started, I'm going to kind of put myself in your shoes, uh, which is if you just heard about BlazeMeter for the first time and you're curious, you can go to blazemeter.com. And uh, everywhere you look, you're going to find a Start Testing Now button, right? And you literally click Start Testing Now. And... Uh, I'll get myself an account here. And boom, I'm into the product. I didn't even actually have to uh, uh, really log in or, or get a password or anything. I'll get a password later. And I could run a test right away by just putting in a URL here and, and, uh, and it would start hitting it. Um, I could skip this wizard and go into the interface. And now I'm in the product and I can start testing. I can just start testing, right? And uh, um, but I may, I, I don't know what to test, and I don't necessarily know JMeter really well, perhaps. And so uh, what's cool is that we can, um, I'm going to go to a, a demo site. It's just a real straightforward uh, sample app we created. And um, what I need is I need the recorder, and I'll show you how I would get it. If I just literally go to the Chrome store, um, right there in the Chrome store, you'll find uh, the Blaze Meter uh, browser extension, right? And I've already added it, but you would just literally click here and it would add to your, to your browser, and it would need to be Chrome in this case, right? And once you do that, um, you've got this little icon up here, and I can just say simple test, hit record, right? I'm going to refresh this first page I'm on so we capture that. And then I'm going to make some choices here. And as I'm doing this, you can see that it's capturing traffic. You see how it says number two up there, right? And then I, uh, uh, I'll choose my flight. I'll put in some details. And I'll go, right? And uh, there we have, uh, I've, I've gone through this workflow, and now I've got my, my test. I can stop this, and I can see what I captured, right? Very straightforward. Uh, give me one moment here. I just want to make sure that uh, everything's good. I'll be I'll be with you in just a sec here. Okay, awesome. Um, I'm only on one screen today, and I wanted to make sure that uh, I didn't have a message waiting for me there about about where sound is good and everything. So anyway, so now I've actually got uh, I've just done a recording, and that was pretty easy, right? And I can output it as a JMeter file. Uh, and now I've got a, a, a test that I can run, and I would go back to my brand new shiny account. I would click JMeter test, and I would say I want to uh, grab that test I just created. I can drag and drop it in there, or I can browse to it. And now that JMeter test is now up on the BlazeMeter cloud, right? And um, I can use a real simple uh, sandbox mode test to just kind of quickly run it and see if it does what it's supposed to do at a low scale. Uh, and I'll save that. I'll give it a name. 
hit save and then I can launch it right so uh, uh, I just wanted to get a sense I don't know how many minutes have elapsed um, uh, but we basically have gotten our account uh, gotten into the tool um, downloaded the the Chrome extension recorded uh, a scenario and started a test right so in the in the the time it takes me to kind of explain that the test is going to come up and start running uh, and that's an actual JMeter test. So I want to do, uh, while we're waiting for that to fire up, I actually want to move over to my account where I've done, done a lot of tests, right? And I want to show you um, uh, a, an even easier way to create a test, which is if I uh, just know that I want to hit a particular endpoint, I can use this URL and API test, and I can just come in here and say homepage, and I can say, oops, right? And um, if I needed to add headers, I can add headers. If I needed to uh, do a post, because I've got a post body, I could do a post body here. And boom, I've got a test ready, and I can just run this. And if we look at it, at one I did uh, uh, yesterday, here I have have I basically am hitting two let's show you a little more detailed example I'm doing two requests I'm posting to this reservation thing with some variables here I'm posting to this purchase thing I've actually got a header in here this thing requires a refer header to be set for it to work so here I can create a test it's literally take maybe two minutes to create a test and then launch it now um, part of what we're trying to do is we're trying to be able to a create a test quickly and B and, and with a lot of specialist knowledge right and B um, be able to scale them up, right? And so if you look at um, at what I did here was that I uh, I ran a test where I just fired up a really basic test using those two APIs and only ramped to 20 users. And you can see that the on the left you have a graph that shows the load um, and the hits per second, and they they are ramping like they should, which is as, a, as users uh, were added, the load kind of scaled with it, and then it was stable. And if you look at response time, it's beautiful. It's to sideways line, uh, 142 milliseconds, super quick, right? Uh, I then made a copy of that, and I uh, ran it a little bigger. Right? In this case, I ran 200 users. And this still worked out pretty well. It scaled like it should, and uh, a little choppier on the response time, but even my worst response time was about a second. But uh, this is a really simple demo app that I'm hitting, and it, it does saturate really early, right? And so now we're seeing that we're actually um, you know, it's not quite as smooth, but it's probably still acceptable. You know, maybe a second is okay, right? Then I thought, you know what, I, I, I let's scale that up even more. Uh, and I went really big, uh, which for this demo site, you know, 2,000 users is really big. And here's where I actually got to see some fireworks, right? So uh, we uh, ramped up really fast. Um, our hits per second was pretty good. And then it actually degraded because the server can only handle so much traffic. Um, we went sideways. We got some errors in here. Um, we had a really T rough patch in here where the, the hits per second went way down and the performance time shot all the way up to uh, uh, 32 seconds. Obviously, in this situation, it's horribly broken, right? So I was able to do all that. Literally, I created one test and then I copied it and made a bigger one and then I copied it and made an even bigger one. And I uh, had all that done in just a few minutes, right? And I mentioned that we want to make it really easy to share. Um, but let's start by actually doing a comparison first. So if I go back to that Excuse me, if we go back to that uh, first test I ran, let's bring up the comparison charts, right? So there's the first test. It was about 20 users. Response time was awesome. Um, I can just easily go here and say, you know what? I want to look at when I ran it a little bigger and put them side by side. And in this case, I know that I was at 200 users. And uh, let's look at what happened with the response time. Pretty big difference, actually. You can see here that, that we're already getting a much slower response time, even just with a little more traffic. And then if we want to go for the big fireworks, I can now compare all three of those tests together. Obviously, I was at a much higher scale there. And again, my response time, much, much, much worse, right? So super easy. Nobody had a degree. No one went away for six months and learned how to use this. Um, that's the idea behind Blaze Meter, right? Uh, the uh, last thing I want to show you before we kind of move in and, and look at the, the actual use case that, that we're uh, uh, 
talking about today, which is really uh, um, how do we use this in the context of SSO, right? Um, we have the ability to generate an executive summary, so you have to share this with somebody else, and you don't even want them to log in. You can create an executive summary, you could put your own logo here, you could give yourself, you could some, write your conclusions here, change the title, and it's got the, the, the kind of what happened during the test, the five slowest things, what the graphs look like, et cetera, right? We also have the ability for you to share you can create a public URL. This is really good when you're working with somebody. You want to give them a login, but you want them to be able to explore all the data. Uh, you give them this shareable link, um, and that link will work um, as long as you don't come in here and shut it off. Um, at that point, the link doesn't work anymore, so they don't even have access. And if you wanted to give it to somebody else, this generates a new link, um, et cetera, right? So make collaboration crazy easy, right? Uh, that is what I wanted to show. Uh, we'll definitely have time for Q&A, um, but I think I want to move on to the main attraction, which is how can you use these tools to uh, to test your SSO and make sure that it's going to work really well um, out there in the real world. I'm going to pass the ball back to Jason. Great. Hey, Dave, before you pass the ball all the way over, there was one question that I think uh, we'll take real quick there, and that's uh, how is Blaze Meter used for internal-only applications? Oh, great, great question. So, so um, uh, we have a, a lightweight Docker uh, container uh, called Private Location that uh, you uh, download from the app, uh, and you can run it on any, any machine that can run Docker. Uh, it then phones home back to the SaaS infrastructure and uh, uh, checks in to see if there's work. It makes only outbound connections in the firewall, so it's 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 uh, security friendly. And uh, if you want to run a test internally where none of the traffic is coming from outside, um, um, you would configure your test just the way I did there, but you would actually declare your location to be uh, the private location uh, or private locations that you set up internally. And then the traffic gets generated there, and you still get the use of sort of SAS, ease of use, and the reporting. Uh, uh, um, but that's a common question, and, and uh, the easy way to do it is what is described. In cases where somebody has super tight uh, security requirements, um, we even have an option where um, you can install a slice of our infrastructure inside um, your firewall, and we'll keep all of the scripts, all of the labels, all of the uh, error messages, the log files, all that stays physically sequestered inside your firewall, uh, and only um, anonymized sort of um, tags are sent up to the cloud so that if somebody were outside the firewall, they would only see uh, gibberish um, and the actual details of what you tested and what the results were and what your scripts were, um, even the, the text of an error message, all would only live inside the firewall. That's what we call private cloud. That requires, obviously, uh, a little more heavy lifting. You're not going to install that in 30 minutes. Um, um, but if you have a need for testing ongoingly uh, and you want to be super uh, uh, private about it, that, that's always an option. Were there other questions, Great. Jason? Um, that's the first one that popped up, and I, I, I only one so far, but I thought it was perfect timing to answer that question. Cool. So, and and thank you so much, and feel free to jump in as we kind of go in from the other, some of these other things. Now, let, let, let's. I want to briefly remind everybody, and I know most of us are very familiar with SSO, and we know where those bottlenecks are, but just real quickly, right? We got a policy server, has got a reactor thread, takes those requests, puts them in a queue, right? We're a queue-based system. The worker threads pick those requests up off the queue, and they do, you know, and they, they do work, right? They take action. They make a call to the user store, the policy store, the session store. They generate assertions. They process XML. They do whatever that policy server does, right? Um, but we have a when time you're in a base system where we got threads grabbing things off of a queue and performing act, performing actions, then we've always got the possibility that threads can be locked and they can get locked for a number of different ways. Um, for example, LDAP directory server is really, really slow. If that LDAP server takes five seconds to perform an authentication, well, then that thread's going to be locked for five seconds. Um, if your network is slow, then every request is going to be a little bit slower, right? So there's definitely a potential of thread locking within SSO, and that's one of the challenges we always face. All right, so we, we've had this, this 
balance that we've talked about for years, right? Um, the, this equation that uh, we try to talk about to build a, a predictive model for our performance and capacity of SSO, right? We have to talk about and understand the throughput of that model and what the impacts of the various points of latency are and help us identify those key performance indicators that can be monitored, managed, and reported on. But that exact same model that we talk about building for monitoring SSO is a model we can use to test SSO to determine are we going to be able to meet our performance goals. Or more importantly, is this change that we're about to make, because we're adding a million users to the directory, we're adding new applications that are very response heavy, is that change going to impact our overall performance? Okay. So when we talk about that model of modeling performance in SSO, be able to predict our capacity and our performance, all right, we've got to keep in mind our two biggest things. What is our throughput? How many total transactions per second can the policy server fulfill? Okay. And let's just, let, let's just talk raw policy server for a minute. Let's not talk about web servers. Let's not talk about access gateway. Just how fast can that policy server perform? And then how long does each transaction take to be processed? Right? And when we talk about that transaction, we've got both a thread latency. Okay? So how long does it take before a worker thread actually pulls the request from the queue? And then the execution latency, how much time does that worker thread actually take processing the request? Right? Thread latency talks about how many requests do we have in the queue? How busy are we? Execution latency is what's our downstream impact? What other things are really affecting our performance? So on any system with a set number of threads, throughput, and latency, Right? As latency goes up, that throughput goes down. Okay? Um, as the throughput goes down, additional requests are queued, causing increased thread latency at that point. Right? So there is that very tight relationship between the execution latency and the thread latency. We've always said that our, 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 our key calculation, right, our, our algorithm is what's our maximum throughput is threads by that average transaction time. The average transaction time is what we're always trying to get to. All right. So we can control the threads. We know this, right? But we can't necessarily the thread or execution latency of those threads. So that's where we need to start testing. If we can control how many threads we have, but we can't control the latency or the execution time of those threads, that should tell us that's where we need to be focusing most of our testing. Okay. So what can impact our, our, our latency and performance? Well, we've got too many agent API requests, right? So we know that a single web page doesn't necessarily mean a single request. We've got HCO settings that limit the number of agent connections, but depending on what agent you're using, what your platform is, those HCO settings aren't necessarily accurately reflected in what's happening. For instance, if we're using Apache, even though we've said 20 agent connections, well, depending on how Apache is configured, it has been using that configuration, and you could have an Apache server out there that you think is going to give us 20 max connections, but in reality it could be doing 2,000 connections, right? So that affects how many requests are coming in, how many API calls are hitting the server. On the back end, right, we've got the latency coming from our user store, our policy store, our session store, right? And the directory latency dramatically affects our throughput. It is probably the number one issue when we walk into a customer that are complaining about poor performance. The policy server is fast. It's blazingly fast. And in fact, our new 64-bit policy server that we've moved to with 12.6 and 12.7 is incredible if you haven't looked at some of those performance numbers or started to test it yourself. But the directories are always where our main bottleneck is because we use it the most. All right, so let's make some assumptions. Let's say we've got 15 threads, okay? 
And for every transaction, every authentication, every authorization, the average of seven LDAP queries happen. And if you think about it, that's not a lot, right? Because for every authentication, we know that we've got a search and a bind at a minimum. Okay, we've probably got another search to look at group memberships or other attributes after the bind. So seven LDAP queries per transaction isn't a lot. Network latency has got to come into effect. Right? We can't ignore that on, on, a, on, a, on a LAN, maybe 10 milliseconds. If you're connecting to a directory across a WAN, you could be looking at 30 to 40 milliseconds, even 60 to 70 is not uncommon. So if our goal is going to be 125 transactions per second, right, using our, um, our, our logarithm, or our uh, transactions there, we've got an average transaction time has to be at least 70 milliseconds plus 30 milliseconds for that processing time right, to give us 100 milliseconds. At 15 threads, that's 150 transactions per second. We easily meet our goal. But if that LDAP transaction time goes up by just 5 milliseconds, right, goes to 15 milliseconds rather than 10, then all of a sudden we drop below and we're down to 111 transactions per second. So that's why understanding the, the the, the, your performance analysis and understanding the, that capacity plan and when you make changes, what it can impact, becomes so important. But that also means those are the areas that we need to test. So, you know, can our directory handle the load? How do we answer that question? Most of the time we're answering that question by testing SSO, right? So. We run tests, we see that it's slow, we look at the logs, we look at analysis, and we realize, oh, it was the directory that was slow. Well, why was the directory slow? Then we got to call our directory guys and start working with them and figure it out. Well, one of the things we're trying to help everyone do is, is you know, let's do this better and faster, right? Let's natively test the directory ourselves, right? JMeter natively supports LDAP transactions. In fact, many of us in the community have been using JMeter to test SSL for a number of years. One of the problems, though, of course, is you're always limited by the capacity of the machine testing. And BlazeMeter solves this for us. Okay. We can simulate an SSL session from the user directory perspective with a real simple JMeter project. All right. We can create a project that simply does a bind or a search, a bind, and a couple other searches and understand what the performance of those seven LDAP transactions would be, right? We know we've got a goal. We know we have to do it in under 100 milliseconds, are we? Um, building that project in BlazeMeter is simple. Or excuse me, building a project in JMeter is simple. Having it executed in BlazeMeter, Blaze Meter, as we just saw, is incredibly simple. So let's go ahead and give it a shot here, all right? So through the magic of uh, television here, let me go ahead and bring up a blaze meter project or a J meter project first. All right. So I've got a couple projects here. Now the first thing I'm actually going to do, I want to show you this one. All right. So this is a JMeter project, okay? Specifically focused on testing CA directory server. And I can run this for my desktop real easy and I'm gonna do maximum 50 threads, ramp up on 60 seconds, okay? And I'm gonna bind to the directory. Okay, I've got a CSV file with 100 million users in it. And yes, I have a CSE file with 100 million users in it. I'm sure we all carry those around. Um, it's got a user ID, a password, given name, surname, email, and a preference in it. Okay. I'm going to add the user to the directory. I'm going to do just a simple query, right? So as the directory has more and more users, do we get reduced performance by simple querying it? All right. Then I'm going to do a specific query for a user. Right? What's the difference between a big lookup and a small lookup? And then I'm going to unbind for the, the 
from the directory. Okay, real simple. Okay, so setting the stage here. Here's my uh, directory in Softera. Okay, double click over here. Make sure I have no users in my directory. It's empty. That's good. All right. So before we look at the next test, I need to add some users to my directory. So we're going to add some users, and I just happen to have a JMeter or a JMeter test that's been set up within uh, Blaze Meter. Okay, and I like to go ahead and use AWS. Um, I'm going to use equivalent to 10,000 users. It's going to wrap up, ramp up in 90 seconds, 100 iterations. I'm going to load some users in my directory. Okay. Now, I pre-built this one specifically so we could start it and have it running while we're sitting here watching. All right. Now launch it up there. Now, one of the reasons why I'm showing this is when we start talking about doing tests at load, right? Um, I'm doing. Ten, I'm going to be simulating 10,000 users. Okay, so we're using Blaze Meter on top of AWS here to spin up a whole bunch of JMeter engines and start doing a whole bunch of users. And my goal here is while we start to go through the next piece is to load about a million users into that directory, all right, and talk about how quick and easy that was for us to do. So there's our, there's our, our directory load test, okay? But what we really want to do is we kind of want to understand the performance of the directory, right? So we want to look at a slightly different test, okay? So in this case, we create a thread group, okay? That tells us the number of potential threads, what our ramp up period. It's really an object within JMeter that's, or that, that's required to do any type of test. Okay? We're gonna bind to the directory, okay? To add that, it's as simple as right click over here, add, Uh, now all of a sudden I can't remember where my LDAP bind was. I think it's going to be a sampler. Yes, I think you're right. There we go. Okay, and an LDAP request, right? And we get our bind to directory. Okay, we're leaving the base DN empty. We're using some variables here. Okay, for our server name, our username, and our password. And I've got a really huge timeout, but part of that is because the actual directories that I'm hitting are also sitting in AWS, and uh, sometimes my connection isn't really great. Then we're gonna have a loop, right? We wanna do several things in a loop. So once again, I've got my CSV file with my 100 million users in it, okay? So I'm gonna do a real quick query, okay? Now, by the way, if you don't know, SSO does this query constantly with its own thread, right? Whenever we're making a connection to an LDAP directory, we've got three connections. A ping connection that just does an object class equals star to make sure that directory's up. An authenticate connection and a bind connection, okay? So then I'm gonna check, does this user exist? Okay. I'm gonna add that user to a group. I'm gonna do a search on the user. I'm gonna remove that user from the group. I'm going to unbind from the directory. Okay, so I'm understand, trying to understand here what's my raw directory performance? What can I actually do to that directory? And what does it take to do more? Right, so this is all great and wonderful, but what if I want to add and do another test to it? So I can right click on here, I can add, I can go to sampler, I can bring in another LDAP request. Okay, and I'm going to add it down here. Oops. And we'll just, and I just like to keep my numbers. We're going to call this one 6B. We're going to validate removal. All right. And it's going to be a search. Okay. 
Okay, and I'm going to come up here and copy and cheat. Grab the wrong one. Say this is why live demos are such a wonderful thing. Okay. So looking in my group and I'm going to check and see if um what group did I remove him from, or add him to, unique member is, and there's my DM. We'll come back down here. Okay. Simple as that, I've now added a new request. Okay, to validate whether or not that user is actually left in the group. Now that request, of course, should return an error to me, right? It should turn that the, the search failed, but that's okay. Errors are good, right, when we're expecting them. Okay, now I can go ahead and I can click Start. I can run this from my desktop, and if I run this from my desktop, right, we're gonna be back to what our settings are, number 50,000, or 50 threads, over 60, period, 60 seconds, ramp up the number of users. Let's jump back over real quick and see where we're at here. Okay, I've got about 10,000 users. I'm doing about 18,000 hits per second. Well, I got a huge error rate right now, okay? You can see that I can, that I kind of hit some response time issues, started pretty good, started going up. This is one of the things that's really, really cool about using BlazeMeter to do this. All right, I can go ahead and I can jump right over here as it's running and start to look at the errors, okay? And I find that sockets closed, timeouts, okay? So what, what we're actually seeing here is that the performance in actually connecting to uh, AWS is what's caused us the problem, all right? Give us something to look at here. I'm going to go ahead and stop this test. Okay, I'm going to tell it to shut down gracefully. And just to prove a point here, let's go back over to my users. Okay. Did create a bunch of users. All right. But we had a bunch of those errors. So now it's a matter of let's look and see what happened. Okay. So my bind failed. We talked about that. Well, if my bind failed, obviously, my ad user probably was going to fail as well because I didn't have a bind, successful bind. Okay. And by the way, it just seems to happen that if I had 694,000 failed binds, 694,000 failed add users, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So it all makes perfect sense. I can look at the individual response codes. You know, in the case of an LDAP search, our response codes are gonna be about the same every single time. I'm not gonna get anything special, okay? I can actually look at the JMeter logs and see what the exact error was from JMeter. Now you'll notice in most cases, this is an LDAP perform for a uh, DNS issue that happens, and it does happen occasionally with AWS testing. Uh, when you're hosting things in AWS. Um, in one of my IPs, it looks like, uh, decided to change on me. Okay. But I still had some pretty impressive throughput. Still made it up to 8,600 8, users, and I got users in my directory. Okay. Thousands of users in my directory. I can go to my groups, take a look at a group, okay. 
Amen. All right, fine. Trust me. There's a, there's users in each of those groups. Okay. Well, that means I should be able to then. I'll run my performance test. Now that I got users in the directory, I should be able to run my performance test as well. Now, once again, I could easily run it locally from JMeter, but I need to do more traffic than what I'm going to be able to ever generate locally. All right, so let's jump back up to Blaze Meter. And let's do my, here's my other test. My performance test. Okay, so once again, this is this same JMeter project. Okay, my 100 million users, my base query, my exact query. This really simulates in a lot of ways with the exception of adding to the group, um, what's happening in an LDAP directory at any given time. Now, part of the reason why I actually did some of this, for instance, adding to the group, is LDAP directories aren't static. So let's try to make sure we have transactions that are going at all times that could affect my performance. Okay, look at the configuration. I've got my performance tests. I've got my users. Okay, now this one I'm going to scale down a little bit. Okay. I don't need 5,000 users for the performance test. Let's bring it down to something that's reasonable for me. Let's do 2,500 users. Okay, ramp it up to 90 seconds. 400 iterations are fine. Okay, and we can start that test. Once again, it'll take a minute to launch the servers. You got to when I get you there, you didn't save, so we're going to do 5,000 anyway. <laughs> I didn't save. We're doing 5,000 anyway. Good catch. No worries. I, I was just looking at that, and I'm like, wow, that's a lot of engines for 2,500 users. But you guys get the idea of where we're, where we're trying to go here to be able to check this performance. Um, while that runs, let me go ahead and jump back over and continue on. Okay. So that gives us a really, really strong first test, right? What's going on in my LDAP directory? What's happening and where can we take that um, to the next level? You know, as you're changing the number of users in your directory, as you're changing the complexity of your directory, as you're changing the complexity of your authentication and authorizations, Right? It's good to be able to go back through and test your directory and understand exactly what that is. Um, what's the impact going to be from that? Um, when we're then moving on to testing authentication and authorization, all right, we want to focus on the outcome, not functional testing. Okay? Our goal here is not to test an application. Our goal is to test SSO and the performance of SSO and the impact of those changes on SSO. So keep it focused on the authentication and authorizations. Okay. Look at a, a simple access pattern, right? You access a protected page, redirect and, and log in, and access another page. That's a valid SSO performance test, right? And if you do it with 10,000 users, okay, then you've successfully tested the throughput of SSO, not an individual application. Applications can get in the way of understanding your your SSL performance. There's a good place to test applications as well, and we can absolutely do that, but let's understand our raw performance first. Um, as you get past those initial basic tests, you start to understand the performance profile of SSO, then we can go a little bit more advanced, right? Take an advanced access pattern, we're still gonna access that protected Still going to get redirected and log in. 
we're going to access another page, access a few more pages, start looking at more complex policies. You know, do you have certain applications that are protected by group membership versus attributes? Do you have um, active responses and active policies that you want to test and understand the performance of those? Okay. You need to understand what you're accessing from a policy perspective as well. It's not just, you know, does it work? It's does it work for this application in the way that we've actually protected it? Now, the plan was uh, we we're going to jump into the next uh, and actually do some web testing here, but I think we're going to save that for the next one in this series. Um, but I'd encourage you all to do a few things, right? Now, so number one, uh, as Dave showed, you're able to very quickly and easily generate a test script, right? Jump onto, you know, open up BlazeMeter, go to the website, sign up, download the Chrome plugin, and I think it took almost seven minutes to start testing. Um, I know the first time I did it, it took me about 15 uh, before I was able to start testing. So it is quick and easy to do. Um, you've also got the ability to convert your existing scripts. And this is one thing that I absolutely love to show to customers. In fact, uh, Dave, didn't we just do a webinar from, a, from BlazeMeter on this and have a demo or a uh, tutorial up for that, converting uh, LoadRunner to JMeter? Yeah, absolutely. So if at shiftleft.blazemeter.com, uh, there's an online converter that can take uh, existing LoadRunner scripts and uh, spit out JMeter scripts for you. So you can take your existing so, so you can take your existing LoadRunner scripts that your performance testing group is using today, convert them and run them with J with uh, BlazeMeter quick and easy, right? So record your script or convert it, modify it, and go. Um, the next seminar in this series will actually go into um, doing some scripts for a website, specifically testing the authentication and authorization of SSO, how to modify your scripts, and how to start to, you know, test the various components of SSO as we continue to go through it. But I wanted to uh, stop for a minute and kind of go into some of the Q&A that we've got. I don't want to forget those. Um, boy, we have a few. I lost track here. So let me jump into, is it possible to run a stress test where advanced authentication is able, enabled so every user call needs to have an OTP to authenticate? So theoretically, yes, it would be. Um, it's definitely an advanced scenario. There's a couple things we would have to do there. Um, it would probably work out best if we actually combined a traditional web script with an API, with some API testing in order to, uh, when that OTP is generated, be able to call back in and grab that OTP real time for that user. Um, there's a couple of scenarios I could see to do it. If you want some specific information on that, I can actually, you know, we can have a conversation, uh, open up a, a discussion in the advanced auth uh, forum if you'd like, and we can have a discussion around that. We've actually been doing some similar things that with like that for a customer uh, that I'm actually working with right now, where we've been able to accomplish it. I'm not saying it's perfectly clean, but it's a good work, good process that works through it. Um, Tony, not sure why a user store could be a contributor. Um, if you were talking about a contributor to a, to performance, um, the user store is always going to be a contributor from a performance standpoint. Is uh, from the standpoint of how long that takes, right? So I have walked into customers where a simple bind, director, bind on their directory takes 10 seconds. And so typically we see binds on directories, you know, CA directory around two milliseconds. Um, active directories is a slow one most of the time and you will see it around 10 to 15 milliseconds. So if, you're, if your directory, if that, simply that bind is taking seconds to occur, 
then your entire SSO infrastructure is going to be slowed down because you've got a ma maximum number of threads you can have. Let's say, for instance, you've got 200 threads. As soon as you've got 200 users trying to log in, if it's going to take a second for each one of those users just to do the bind, not, let alone everything else, uh, everything can be ra waiting for that to log out of that authentication to happen before it can move forward. Make sense, guys? Um, so uh, we're not going to jump into that next script. We'll save that for the next one, which I think we're targeting right now, by the way, guys, for October. Um, we're going to try to do one every other month for the foreseeable future. Um, but uh, if you want a copy of this, I believe the uh, Chris, we're going to have this made available uh, on the uh, on the community site here in the next day, and then uh, all the materials that we shared, absolutely, we can get you guys a copy of. And I'd encourage you to go to Blaze Meter and just sign up, start playing. It's a great tool. Um, there's a lot of power that uh, you can tap to be able to test your environments. Any other questions? I think that's it for questions right now, actually. Uh, All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining. It's great to have a, a nice turnout, uh, and I uh, hope this is useful. And, uh, yeah, that Blaze Meter account is definitely free, and if you need to scale it up bigger uh, in a hurry, there is a credit card option, but obviously, as a CA customer, you can always contact your rep and uh, work out something custom that fits you best. Thanks a lot for your time, Dave, and thanks, everybody, for coming. Thank you, guys. And again, the recording will be available in the next few days up on the site, as well as the presentation. So thank you, everyone, and have a great rest of your day.